In my last video, I showed how the extraterrestrial ion drive works using argon gas for space travel and a special form of electricity and magnetism we haven't discovered yet here on Earth until now. There's another version called the Dragonfly Drone UFO, which works in the ordinary air, doesn't need argon, sort of like an ion jet engine. And this was a picture which Linda Howe made famous in 2007. There's some little pre-ionization tubes. There's the active side. It shoots out air. And this is a detail of it over electricity lines. You can see all these little details and those spikes, which were also drawn in a crop picture from 2009, which has NS for magnetism north and south, two little lizards for the right-hand rule, Lorentz force of electricity and magnetism, and ions being shot out below. So the implication is clearly that electricity and magnetism are somehow shooting out ions below from this device. Now that would be very interesting to learn how that happens. And it's the same actually as the argon gas, except it uses air, which has much more resistance. Someone published this detailed version, and these bars around the outside, there are nine of them, are radio magnets, and I've made a little model like that. What they do is make the air spin when it gets ionized, and also shot out very rapidly by two what are called Lorentz forces. Inside there was a mystery, but actually there are plus minus electrodes inside which I've made. Each of those little loops is a minus electrode and there's a plus nearby. So we have a ring which is minus on the inside, plus on the outside, and the air spins as a fast circle through those rings and then gets shot out by these radio magnets. So I'm not making it up, I've made some models to show how it works. And let's go ahead and show those models now and I'll get back to the theory later. This device is meant to be a small scale model of the Dragonfly drone UFO. We have eight big radio magnets around the outside, just air and a 60 millimeter annulus in the middle with positive on the outside, negative on the inside. Very narrow. When we turn on the power, you can see the current arc start to spin. This is based on air alone, no argon. You can see blue nitrogen oxygen ions. around the outside. And eight radio magnets making it spin. Push this device more deeply into the radio magnets. Then we lose magnetism. There's no spin. If we pull the copper and aluminium tubes a little fur forward into the field, then the arc begins to spin. Thus the best arrangement seems to have those two copper aluminium tubes as a Corbino disc, plus on the outside, minus on the inside, and very thin because of air resistance, surrounded by eight radio magnets, just inside the ends of those magnets, like it is in the Dragonfly drone UFO. very nicely. It also ejects ions to air. Nitrogen plus, both plus, and electrons. I can't really make this device bigger because it would take a million volts. Air is much more resistant than argon gas. This is with the slightly larger annulus. The ends of the tube needs to be close to the ends of the radio magnets. Just the air, no argon. And again, you can see it's spinning, but not quite as fast as desired because the annulus is so large. And you can see the nitrogen oxygen ion crackling as they get shot out by a Lorentz force to the spin.
We've learned today how the dragonfly UFO works in terms of basic ion physics, which is easy to understand but not previously known on Earth. These bars around the outside are just radio magnets that repel one another very strongly, so that's why I've put a lot of tape around this model. And what they do is they make the ion spin when formed inside, and also because they're radial, like this, when the ions spin, there's a Lorentz force that shoots them up and out, or downward, as you might prefer. Now, it's hard to make these little plus-minus electrodes at 40,000 volts, because the minus was short with the plus somewhere around this ring, and it has to be a very narrow annulus. So when I did this, it was really trouble putting the minus inside the plus, because it would short out so easily and ruin the effect, which is what you need to do. So what the extraterrestrial builders of this device did cleverly is to put plus on the outside each of these little minus electrodes is a little ring of discrete size which can't break and can be located easily and the gas will spin inside those rings between the plus and the minus and that way there's no trouble with shorting out and so what it happens it spins very quickly comes down ionized gas from the top spins around really quickly incredibly fast like for a jet engine and then when it spins, these magnets have magnetic fields that all point inward, and then makes another Lorentz force that shoots it out as thrust. So that's the basis for the ion jet engine. A team can make it right now here on Earth with, say, a million, 10 million volts and a lot of power. It'd be interesting if someone like Elon Musk or NASA or SpaceX wants to do it. I've shown you the physics. We can do it. We don't have to remain in the dark ages. Bye for now. More progress soon.